mates can be great, but tonight friendships don't rate as one young jet with divided loyalties is about to discover when the F3 derby rolls into town, you often have to duck for cover. Well, no doubt this is the marquee match for both teams, but rarely has it meant so much. It's Central Coast Mariners hosting the Newcastle Jets. Another big crowd has squeezed into Blue Tongue Stadium for the penultimate round of the regular season. The home team eyeing off that minor premiership. The visitors chasing a win to guarantee their playoff position. Well, the temperature is cooling here on the Central Coast, but the stakes are certainly rising, especially for Newcastle, who now have Melbourne victory breathing down their necks. Well, the defence may have steadied the Mariners' ship last weekend, but an untimely groin injury forces Nigel Bugard out of the side, although Andrew Clark is a capable replacement. Injury has also sidelined Greg Owens with Adam Kwasnick off the bench to slot into the right side of a four-man midfield. Sash Petrovsky and John Hutchinson continue to walk the suspension tightrope, while Elvin Checkley makes his first home appearance after a solid debut in Perth a week ago. Well, a win tonight will secure a playoff berth for the Jets, and Gary Van Eggman has gambled with one change to a winning side. Denny Rocha dos Santos returns from injury at the expense of Scott Tunbridge. The other change is a forced one. Adam Griffiths starts a two-game suspension, and Adam Deputso earns a recall with Stu Musharlik, still not deemed fit enough to start. The man of the moment, Joel Griffiths, will be keen to stay out of trouble after his last visit to Gosford produced arguably the most controversial moment of the season. Well, from inaugural skipper for the Mariners to being shown the door at the end of last season, Noel Spencer returns to Gosford with a point to prove. Can the man they call Spanner unlock the finals door? Well, the gloves are off here in Gosford. There may be a generation gap between Ante Kovic and young gun Danny Vukovic, but they're hard to split in that race for the Socceroos jersey. The World Cup opener less than one month away. Uh, for now, it's all down to the business of the Hyundai A-League final series. The man to control the match is Matthew Breeze. The sun out here on the central coast. The Jets get the game underway. The Mariners who have led the table for most of the season. This is probably their biggest match of the season. Likewise though for Newcastle Jets. Joining me for the call, Robbie Slater, who was in Melbourne last night. And Robbie, that win by the victory, I'm sure, has caused a few anxious moments in that Newcastle dressing room. Well, there's no doubt that the players would have watched the match last night. And there would be a, a certain amount of unease as they watched Melbourne tear apart Wellington. They've been in flying form, Melbourne. But the great thing for Newcastle, I'm sure Gary Van Egmond has told his players, is that it is all in their hands. They are in control of their own destiny. And I'm sure Gary Van Egmond has told his players to forget about Melbourne and anyone else. Adelaide is still in there as well, of course. But it's all about the game in front of you. That's all you can concentrate on. Central Coast have dropped. Well, really, they should have had the minor premiership wrapped up. They've only picked up five out of a possible 18 points. So that shows you that their form's come off. Their last two home games, of course, they considered 10 goals, five apiece to Sydney and then to Melbourne. So they've had their own problems as well. But again, they are a point ahead of Sydney and Queensland. So they have it in their own hands as well. Sets it up for a fantastic match here at the Blue Time this evening. Well, this is always a game we look forward to. There's been tension and an edge to this match since the pre-season. In season one, we'll never forget, we'll be allowed to forget, the broken lead sustained by Andrew Durante, caused by Nick Merger, who of course is out through injury. But that set it up. This is the derby game in the Hyundai A-League. The Jets have never won here in Gosford. But the Mariners haven't beaten the Jets in almost two years. They're going to be hard to split again tonight. Here is Durante. He's took their eyes off the ball and allowed it to cross the sideline. Early nerves, but interesting move by Gary Van Egmont playing Noel Spencer. I think it's a good move as well. Stuart Michali maybe just not fit enough to start, but Noel Spencer comes back to his old club and he'll be really up for the game, of course. Long ball forward. Griffiths the only one there for the Jets. Only cross in. He really didn't look up, though, Joel Griffiths. He just hoped someone would be there. I think he had every right to hope someone would be there. Sometimes you don't have time to, to look up. I thought he did well. He worked half a metre. Whipped a great ball across the face of goal. Someone should have been trying to get in on the end of it. And that's important. So when you play a 4-2-3-1 like Mary Van Egmond is playing, it's important that those players behind, be it Denny, Holland, 
particular Mark Bridge, when Joel Griffiths pulls wide, as he quite often likes to do, you have to get yourself in the box. Well, Joel Griffiths has harassed the Mariners to concede the first corner. It came off Paul O'Grady. They are the lowest scoring team in the competition. Newcastle Jets. 21 goals in their 19 games so far. They do play with a lone striker. That may be part of the explanation. Vukovic has some early work to do. And it comes from Holland. Back post delivery. We have arm wrestling going on between Caputso and Yedinak. Well, this is a real test of character, isn't it, for James Holland? The Budjuoi boy who trained with the Mariners, Central Coast Junior, who decided to turn his back on his hometown club to join their arch rivals. And, uh, when you're 18 years of age, that counts as going right back into the lion's den, doesn't it? Well, he's young enough not to worry about those sorts of things. He's obviously made a, a choice for his own future and he's felt that Newcastle was the better option. He's certainly been playing well enough. He must have a fantastic future ahead of him. He's certainly not very popular with the fans here. Gary Van Egmont making the point today that you don't do a bad player. He believes James Holland is a player with a big future. Yet an act. Oh, we see. Trotsky looked as though he might have strayed into an offside position. Here's Kwasnik. Reels it in, close to the sideline. Cross blocked by Matt Thompson. One of six Newcastle players involved in that Socceroos camp at the start of this week. Gets some movement from Petrovsky. Long throw in. Tom Gorich had to clear the danger. It's only been half cleared. Now Holland has Denny to his right. Inside is Deputso, who opens up the room for the Brazilian. The early return does fall for James Holland. Holland! The Jets in front! And James Holland returns to haunt his old club and how? Well, we're just talking about James Holland. Well, it's going to be even more unpopular. This all started on the halfway line from James Holland. Beautiful touch. The ball, I thought, from Denny was played in far too early. But he got a lucky bounce. It wasn't great defending. You see there, Paul O'Grady allowing the ball to bounce. James Holland nips around, just gets a toe to it gets it past Vukovic. What a wonderful piece of skill in his own half, James Holland. And he was the player that started the move, and he's the one who finished it. Oh, what an answer to the fans who have barracked him as Aloisi tries his luck from distance. Player at the other end of the spectrum in terms of experience. At the moment, the Mariners now chasing the game because of a goal from a young man with a big, big future. Goal number three of the season for James Holland. This is just his sixth appearance. What a moment for him. And what a start for Newcastle. Talked about maybe having nerves and watched Melbourne last night and then breathing down their necks. So that's the best way to settle your nerves. Here comes O'Grady, who will be disappointed with his uh, contribution to that goal, no doubt. Denny. Sorry, Mike, but... Uh... Well, Clark has left the back pass short. Griffiths rounds the goalkeeper, but Vukovic did just enough. Could so easily have been double trouble for the Mariners. Well, it's a bad miss in the end. It's a poor pass from Andrew Clark. He knows it straight away. Joel Griffiths, I thought he could have just taken that a little bit further. He was virtually around Vukovic, had to give him credit in the end, the goalkeeper. But really a man in his type of form, Joel Griffiths. Should have buried that one. Well, they hoped they'd stop the rot with that one-all result in Perth last week, the Mariners. Having conceded 10 goals in their previous two home games, but it hasn't been the best of starts. 
hesitation in that Central Coast defence. Clark. Launches it, looking for Petrovsky. Can't shake off Elrich. Here's Kwasnick, he's changed sides. Aren't those Newcastle fans making a lot of noise? Kwasnick! Adam Kwasnick squares it up! What a response from the Central Coast! And what a game we have on our hands! What a finish. That's a great finish from Kwasnick. Well, if they were guilty of poor defending the Central Coast to concede to James Hole and Newcastle were here. Kwasnick comes inside, he loses touch here. That's a poor effort of a tackle. And Kwasnick gets the ball back again. Great work from him, determination. Denny gets a touch. Their Daputs are far too soft when you're on the edge of your penalty area. But Adam Kwasnick still had a lot to do. Head down, perfect technique, great strike, the back of the net. That is a slide rule finish from Adam Kwasnick. Kovic beaten at his near post. Two good finishes, but you'd have to say both teams guilty of some poor defending as well. Two goals and we're only nine minutes into the match. Early ball in from Petrovsky. Pondiak makes a nuisance of himself. Gets it towards that near post area. Eventually away by Spencer. Well, I wonder how Ernie Merrick's feeling now, watching this game. <laughs> Would have hit his head down a minute ago, and he would be back up now. Only nine minutes gone. Well, the Mariners, we shouldn't forget, really did struggle for goals last season, but this is the place you want a season ticket, isn't it? The goals have been flying in here at the Blue Tongue Stadium. 18 in the last three home games up till now and still a long way to go here. And the crowds have been rolling up and enjoying every moment of it. Griffiths away from Clark. Sets it up for Holland almost. Toe poke from O'Grady. Holland offside though. Relief here for the Central Coast. Well again they looked in trouble didn't they? Conceded 10 goals in the last two home games. There's Pim Verbeek with Graham Von Arnold, as he's been nicknamed. He must have really played in Holland, of course, and he's had the influence now of two Dutch coaches, Gus Hiddink, of course, and now Pim Verbeek. Of course, he had a spell in charge himself. Tripped on by Aloisi. Well, Pim Verbeek did make the point early this week that he... Uh, was, shall we say, unimpressed with the quality of defending in the, the Hyundai A-League. I'm not sure if those worries would have been put to rest in the first ten minutes <laughs> he here. He certainly wouldn't have changed his mind at the moment. It was great for the fans. It's Denny, the put so only to uh, redeem himself. Thompson. Forced to go back to his goalkeeper. Launched by Vukovic, but I will see. Ruled to be an offside position. He's not too happy with the ruling. John Aloisi. There is one player who has. Uh, no worries about being involved in that Socceroos squad against Qatar. Well, very important role that he will have to play as well. Experience, particularly if it's a Hyundai A-League based team. You'd imagine that World Cup starters would be Aloisi. I would say Craig Moore as well. Might even be thinking about Musket. Moore making some uh, very pointed comments yesterday about the quality of the local players. Here's a chance for Mark Bridge. He's in behind Vukovic again. Makes a very important save. The Puzzo. Away by Wilkinson.
Oh, with the way both of these two teams are defending, there are plenty more goals to come. Oh, again, they were caught out. Central Coast is the foul from De Pizzo on, on Hutchinson, just barging in. Bosnick's early ball, looking for Petrovsky. The Mariners in a hurry to get the game going. A good save from Vukovic. Similar position where James Holland was, Mark Bruch, maybe just a little bit wider. Good save from Vukovic. Two good saves. Hutchinson. Side down by Tarek Elwich. Not a lot of science about that tackle from the Jets fullback. I'm sure he watched his brother play in at the Telstra Dome last night. Both playing very similar positions, of course. Very similar styles of play as well. Armwood um, certainly didn't have his best match last night for Wellington Phoenix. He has conceded the free kick. It's Pondiak assessing the possibilities. O'Grady at the back post, adding the height. Gedanak is there as well. Here comes from Podliak. And a nudge by Mila Yedinak on Durante. Andrew Durante linked to a move to Wellington Phoenix the next season. Here are the goals. Well, there's that first the touch from James Holland. What I love about a midfielder who does that, doesn't admire his work. He gets himself into the box. Beautiful touch, sets it up. And off he goes. He's got one thing on his mind. Here's Adam Kwasnick now. Daputso, that's a poor piece of defending. Kovic beaten on his near post, but to be fair, there was a lot of power in the strike from Kwasnick. I certainly like the looks of this James Holland. Got lovely balance. Very versatile. He can play him in a more defensive midfield role but where he is at the moment in a, an attacking midfield role he loves to get into the box and he shows that he's got a nose for goals and we know that midfielders that score goals are very very rare James Holland had hoped to be going to Japan on a loan spell with his teammate Joel Griffiths the Vispa Fukuoka, coached by former Sydney coach Pierre Lebasque, but that loan deal has been squashed, we're told. Here he is sliding the ball into the path of De Puzzo. He needs some support. Thompson. Holland continues his run. Wilkinson, perfectly timed tackle. It had to be. That's a great tackle from Alex Wilkinson. We use, use the word great maybe far too often, but that was a goal-saving tackle. If he doesn't get that, Poland is one-on-one -on -one with Vukovic again. We applaud attacking play, but defensive play as its art as well. And that was a perfectly timed tackle from Alex Wilkinson. There's James Holland. Some start to the match here. He's certainly getting the rest from the Mariners fans. He's having the adverse yeah, effect. No, it hasn't affected him one bit. Here's Kwasnick, away on the right. Whips in a dangerous ball. Cut out by Andrew Durante. Clark getting forward. Andrew Clark. Shall we say that's a defender's shot? It was. He could have got on. John Aloisi was furious. Andrew Clark. Probably nearly a nosebleed finding himself in the box so close to goal. You can often see it, but he could have gone on with that. He still could have taken the shot, got a bit close, or then he would have had an option, I'm sure, of maybe squaring it to Aloisi who was coming in. Good ball from Thompson. There's Andrew Clark, no goals in 52 games in the A-League. He has other qualities. You play to your strengths. Here's Checkley. Pushing on the overlap for the first time. The player who, of course, has come the other way from Avispa Fukuoka. Holding Checkley. Odliak. Looking for Aloisi. North with the header. Chance here for the Mariners. Hutchinson might have done better. Good recovery though. I think it was Andrew Durante.
took too long, Hutchinson. Well, it didn't just come down for him, but it had to take it a lot quicker than that. It just opened up for him. Oh, it's been hot and sticky here on the Central Coast through most of the day, but it certainly cooled off. There's a nice nor'easter as well. Good early tempo to this game. Big crowd in. Plenty at stake. Where would you rather be? Check a leak. From Miller, Yedinak, Bosnik, Bondiak. Well, I don't know, also he's strong, but not strong enough for Durante, but it falls for Yedinak. Plenty of meat behind the shot, but not the direction. And Ante Kovic absolutely furious with his team's defending. Well, I think it was Noel Spencer that gets caught out this time. He takes a poor touch, and that could have gone the same way as Bosnik's. Plenty of power, yet Nick just couldn't get the direction. But so many defensive mistakes from both sides. And it, the only surprise, really, at the moment, we come up to 20 minutes, is it's still one all. Oh, there's another one. Noel Spencer hitting a teammate. It now breaks for Petrovsky. And they've got numbers here in the Central Coast. One of them is Hutchinson. Good recovery from Denny. Here's Czecholi. Looking for Alawisi, but it was North attacking the ball. And that's a rather hopeful effort in the end for Mila Yedinak. But he did score from distance against the victory a couple of weeks ago. Well, it's just a comedy at the moment. Noel Spencer hitting his teammate Denny to set Central Coast up on an attack where they did have numbers. Ends up with that. Yedinak has the confidence. Never have a go to play up. He has a crack from there. There wasn't much else on. He's tried to take it on the, on the volley. Didn't yes. set himself right. He scored two goals in his last three games, Milo Yedinak. Here's Griffiths. Again, it's a blind pass inside by Joel Griffiths. Now he gets him down that inside right channel. It's his favourite place. It's where he works the best in that area. Aloisi. It's a metre or so on Jade North. Now, Chuckley bombs forward. Gets away from Tarek Elric. Good shimmy here from Elvin Cekali. Has he overdone it? No. Yes. I thought that was going to make its way through to Kwasik. It might still. Another poor piece of work from Adam De Puzzo. Kwasik. Why does Elvin Cekali come back on his right foot? Naturally left footed. He skipped past the defender. He's got a perfect opportunity to whip one in. Behind the defence, in front of the goalkeeper, and he comes back onto his right foot and just clips a lollipop into the box, which was easily dealt with. Explain that. Well, Joel Griffiths caught offside. Not happy with the timing of the pass from Denny. Just about right, I'd Just say. about. I thought I'd let you say that first. We do give out praise grudgingly, don't we, to assistant referees. Durante. The Jets midfield really hasn't got going as yet. Spencer and the puts on the middle, which provided by Bridge and Denny. It's, it's been turned over cheaply by Noel Spencer. I was expecting Mark Bridge to make a, a run, but he held his ground. He did just to open himself out. Tarek Elrich was there, Pinver Bate looking on. Does he look impressed? I'm sure he's impressed by what he's already said, the stadiums, the crowds, the colours. 
I think that's football really well is exciting. Like. Yeah, the full, full football is exciting. There's goals, there's plenty of chances, but really from you know, a World Cup qualifying perspective, defensively, there's not much to smile about. There's Andrew Durante getting a foul on Petrovsky. Now, you've got potential players out there. No Jade North, Alex Wilkinson. In fact, the game on Tuesday, the training game, he lined up the entire Jets back four in front of Ante Kovic. Suggesting they might have first dips in the game against Qatar. We'll have to wait and see. Kosnick. Well, Kosnick pulled the shirt of Mark Bridge there, well spotted by the assistant, Ben Wilson. Was again for the injured Greg Owens. Continues to battle those uh, recurring back problems of his. Great for a coach to, to bring someone in and get a result like that. Posnick, a great strike. The equaliser, the central post. It's almost like the play is saying, there you go. Eddie Doughton. North. Clark, Evan Bridge, no time to settle. Strong challenge from Spencer. Mark Bridge finding it difficult to get into the game at the moment. It's a free kick there, but this a player, I think, has been affected by the travel of the Oli Roos and you know, very difficult commitments. I felt his form's come off for Newcastle in the last... Maybe the month impending so. move to Sydney FC might be a factor and as maybe well. Maybe other things on his mind. I'd hate to think... That would be the case because the moment he's wearing a Newcastle shirt, he's got a wonderful chance to, to play football in the finals. Whether he's going or not, he's playing for Newcastle at the moment. Holland flicks it over his head. Griffiths challenges to put so. Not a touch, but it was a hot one. For Matt Thompson, but again the decision goes against the Mariners. Good decision. Brees not endearing himself to the Central Coast fans, but he's an experienced referee. No, he's a, getting them right. It's a good decision for me because Yednak, although he gets the ball and it's a good tackle in the beginning, he has a follow through there that takes out Matt Thompson. That's a good decision. All the Newcastle players, not surprisingly, have left this one to Joel Griffiths. What a free kick at the Telstra Dome he took. Best one in the whole three seasons. Well, he's forced to save Joel Griffiths. Winklevich the busier of the two keepers. I think he sees that one late. He sees it late because he dives. And I didn't think it was a great, greatly struck free kick, but it certainly had him scrambling in the end. That's three saves then, made by Danny Vukovic. Important ones. Griffiths, clever ball, plays in Mark Bridge, Holland is free inside, Bridge goes himself, rebounds here for Joel Griffiths, appeals for handball, no reaction from the referee, Matt Thompson, and again Vukovic spreads himself well, he's keeping the Mariners in this game. Great save, low down to his right hand side, pushes it around the post, it was a mistake, he gave away possession again near the halfway line and they were off, wonderful ball from Joel Griffiths. To Mark Bridge. Mark Bridge hesitates. I was talking about his form. You can see there how he hesitates. A falls to Joel Griffiths. Not a great first touch, but he lays it back to Matt Thompson. That's going in the bottom hand corner. The Jets with the corner, overheating the corner. What a save from Vukovic. A nudge there from Yedinak. That is silly play from Mila Yedinak. He left the referee with no alternative, straight through the back of his opponent. And again, the Jets have a chance to build the pressure. Danny Vukovic. Very busy at the moment. As the Jets go looking for the lead. 
It's to Puzzo. Decent delivery. Joel Griffiths. Just wide. Vukovic was nowhere this time. He stood with his heart in his mouth. And how relieved was he? He's unlucky in the end, Joel Griffiths. It's not great defending again. Decent ball. Not a lot of pace on it. Joel Griffiths just manages. He's actually going backwards as he heads that. And he's just trying to guard it, guide it into the far corner. And it misses the post by inches. Central Coast really defensively are struggling in this opening half an hour. They conceded 10 in their last two home games against Sydney and Melbourne. Maybe last week it got a little bit better in Perth, but really difficult to believe that this was the best team defensively only a few weeks ago. A lifetime ago, Laurie McKinnon might say. <laughs> Hutchinson has battled well. Gets it back from Podlia. Might have been clipped. Now Chekalik looks up. Still Chekalik. A toe poke in the end. Caught in two minds, Alvin Chekalik. Probably should have had a shot himself. He should have. It opened up beautifully for him. On his, now he's naturally left footed. I thought he's just going to drive to the near post. And whack it, go across the keeper. Maybe he misses the target. Someone slides in on it. Look at there, he hesitates. He takes it again, hesitates it again. In the end, it's a nothing ball. Now Lewis, he can't do anything with it. There, when you get your head up and there's so many bodies in the box, just take a chance, pull the trigger. Checkley saw the run early. Not a good ball down the line to Hutchinson. Can't get away from Elrich this time. Spencer. Back at the blue tongue for the first time since his uh, acrimonious departure, but it wasn't entirely pleasant. Thompson. Holland leaves it for Griffiths. Griffiths. The way the goal was blocked by Kwasnick, there was no way through, and Kwasnick might have taken a knock in the process. And there's blood, isn't there? It's streaming in the head of Adam Kwasnick. Oh, top the boot. Play continues. Chekalik looking for Aloisi, who does get some contact. And now a chance for Kwasnick to receive treatment. Half an hour gone, one apiece between the Mariners and the Jets in the F3 derby. It's lived up to all of our expectations. Kosnick struggling. Bit of claret. He just catches him as he turns. It's completely accidental. Joel Griffiths. Joel Griffiths has gone up. He says sorry. I mean, obviously, Joel Griffiths is a rule. Well, he's not going to win a popularity contest among those lot, is he, Joel Griffiths? No, when, look, when it's there to be said, he does something on purpose. Uh, you know, you say it, but that was a complete accident. John Lewis has gone up to talk to Joel Griffiths. Won't do anything for his looks. I wonder if Joel Griffiths is casting his mind back to his last visit here to the Blue Tongue. The most controversial moment of the season. Certainly was with the referee's assistant. Very, well, almost a very embarrassing moment. Quite incredible how he didn't uh, get a red card that day. He apologised for it, so it's gone. The Puzzo plays in Thompson. The shot from Bridge. He doesn't allow. He's dissected to, the corner flag in the trying, goal post. He's trying to allow that to come across his body. And he doesn't let it come across enough. That's why it's completely off target. Plenty of power behind it. The snout there. Oh, that's an attractive oh. picture, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> Do we have a rating on this program? <laughs> well, people always sometimes ask questions. What do they do when the nose is bleeding? Well, there you go, you know. 
Well, if it does the job, uh, that's the main thing. Here's Elrich. So the Mariners still down a man. Opportunity knocks for the Jets. Spencer. Chips it in, hoping that Holland would get there. No mucking around at all there by Paul O'Grady. And now Kwasnick eager to rejoin the fray. That's the final check by the fourth official, Strembley Golovsky, who's not entirely happy. So again, the Mariners have to wait. Hutchinson just fails to reel it in on that far side and gets uh, a few raspberries from the Jets fans in that far corner. Very impressive contingent of travelling fans as well. The biggest number of Newcastle fans I've seen here at the Blue Tongue Stadium. Proving again this rivalry is building nicely. Finally, Kosnick is out and about. Thompson. Nice technique there from getting it. Peter from Alex Wilkinson. A lot of players would have just tried to help that on. Catches on his chest, kills it. Just knocks it back to Vukovic. Sometimes uh, from certain quarters you get some of the players in the league itself. It's a bit of criticism. But the, the technical level and ability of the players, I find it's at a, quite a decent level. Of course, there are problems at the moment in the Hyundai A-League, probably final third, which has been better in the last month across all the clubs, but maybe defending at the moment. Well, I backed off Yedinak, who accepts the invitation, and why not? And again, Ante Kovic... Having a strong word to the players in front of him. Well, no one closes Look at the space. Down. It's a horrible shot in the end. <laughs> Very disappointed by that, Yednak. When we talk about the goals that Mariners have conceded here, 10 in their last two home games, but uh, amazingly enough, they still have the best home record of any club with four wins from eight here at the Blue Tongue. It is, of course, one of the big features of this season. How successful the away teams have been. Ten minutes or so left in this first half. Petrovsky. Bridge. Thompson moves forward. A bad bounce. Probably worth mentioning the quality of the surface here in Gosford as well. Not the best compared to the last couple of seasons. They've had a lot of rugby on this ground. They had a problem with a disease as well. A couple of days this week they couldn't get any water on it. Well, they've had a defending disease recently. <laughs> Maybe a few of those defenders <laughs> will point to the turf as an excuse. It was a bit bumpy. Kosnick away, but offside. Mm, would have been close. Right in front of the referee's assistant. And he got that one right. Ben Wilson. One of the most experienced ARs, as they call them, assistant referees. You and I call them linesmen still. These days, of course, you have to choose between being a referee and an assistant referee. Old days used to mix it up. Check elite. Not a bad bit of business for Laurie McKenna getting Elvin Checkley to replace Dean Heffernan, who of course has been ruled out with that broken leg. Very We've just good. got news that uh, Denny Rocha dos Santos, who came into the side despite a hamstring concern, may be about to have an early mark with Jason Hoffman, his replacement. So by the looks of things, a change before half-time by the Jets, maybe to try and stem that tight in midfield. Hutchinson. Clark got the call at the back post from an unmarked Petrovsky and we can see Hoffman in fact uh, getting stripped and ready for action 
So that will be the end of the section for Denny Rocha dos Santos. Well, he hasn't been in the game, has he? The gamble didn't pay off for Gary Van Egmont. The Brazilian clearly not 100%. What Jason Hoffman will give the Jets is plenty of work rate. Long throw from Clark. Seized upon by Petrovsky. Clever back heel. Hutchinson. Well, it was well worked until that final moment for the Central Coast. Jason often immediately pushing further forward on that far side than Denny did. Maybe to give Joel Griffiths a bit more support up front. The other Griffiths, Adam, of course, will be desperately hoping the Jets make the finals. Otherwise, it's the end of the season for him. The first of a two-game suspension here tonight. Hutchinson gets past one. Lines it up. Aloisi. Boy, you have to take it quick. Straight at the keeper, Kovic. He's going for the far side. Trying to bend it along the ground. Swerve it, if you like, to the far corner around Kovic. I thought he could have let that roll across his body a bit more. Go for a more full-blooded strike. Something like Hernandez did last night. From a Nicky Ward pass. A wonderful finish. Johnny Aloisi. He felt that he had to take it quicker. Good bit of play from John Hutchinson. Jay Dorf. Well, there he's chewed up the time. Prevented the Mariners from taking the quick free quick and avoided a yellow card all in one. He was learning the tricks of the trade, the Newcastle captain. And both sides have been very narrow in this first half. Not a lot of width in both teams. It's probably because of the personnel. Kwasnick, right side, Hutchinson, left side of a four-man midfield for Central Coast. Not really natural wide players, particularly Hutchinson. Clark. It's not a good free kick. Straight down the throat of Ante Kovic. Well, another of the criticisms, if you like, from Pim Verbeek is there is not enough width in the A-League. Well, there's not enough wide players. Players of true quality, true wingmen, if you want to call them that. I believe Caceres for Melbourne's one of those sort, sorts of players. Of course, Queensland are, are quite blessed in that sort of regard with Robbie Cruz. They do put a high premium on wide players, the Dutch on don't Zula. they? Oh, they do. You only have to go through the years of the, the Overmars and the Overmars and Zendens and, and others. Side again against Newcastle. Well, he was. Puts up. Brought down by Aloisi. Hasn't had a real good look at the goal as yet, John Aloisi. Maybe a bit of frustration involved. Good work from Hutchinson to get away from Elrich. He's giving Tarek Elrich a real challenge here, John Hutchinson. Elrich has the pace, but maybe Hutchinson has the smarts at the moment. Just to be winning that particular battle. Podliak into the near post area. Petrovsky! Sesh Petrovsky across the face of goal. And almost a fatal hesitation there. Kovic and Durante, didn't they get their wires crossed? Well, they just got caught square. One's got his hand up. Petrovsky just... Knocks this over Kovic. Clever little ball from Pondliak. Should never have been allowed to get into that position. Aloisi wasn't far away from it either. Well, Sash Petrovsky still the preferred strike partner for John Aloisi. Because of his scoring record. Matty Simon, of course, who is a regular substitute, is putting the pressure on, but... He needs to score goals. Hadn't scored in 19 games in the A-League, Matt Simon. 
which is the reason he is still in reserve. Sasquatchowski, much more of a proven goal scorer. Hutchinson has been brought down. Another free kick for the Central Coast again. Pondliak ambles his way across. deliveries but it does fall to the feet of Petrovsky who's immediately closed down. Oh, Pomlik was furious there. Petrovsky should have just laid that back into his path. He's enjoying the uh, <laughs> repartee with the Jets fans, John Hutchinson. And they're enjoying it as well. Saying a couple of objects might have been thrown. Okay. 50 cent piece, you pocket that. That's stupid. Here comes the throw. Spencer with the header. Holland helping out. Thompson away. Only bridge at the pointy end for Newcastle. And he is just hacked down by oh, Bridge. Oh, and Checkley pretty happy to concede a free kick there to allow the rest of the team to get back in position. We're inside the final minute of normal time. It's been an absorbing first half here in Gosford. Is there going to be a sting in the tail? Elwich. Rebounding off Hoffman. Bondiak. Peels for handball against Thompson. Referee unmoved. He needed... A flag, I would suggest from his assistant to make that ruling. Didn't get one. Play on. It's been an interesting first half. It's come off a, a little bit from the first 25 minutes. So Central Coast, some terrible defending. The Jets in that opening 25 minutes on numerous occasions, but probably since then they've controlled the game. Couple of more minutes before these players get a rest. A strike from Tommy Pondliak, and that's looks like a handball to me. Maybe Thompson, it's outside the box, of course. So therefore, no penalty, but clearly a handball. Holland. Maybe Durante or Hoffman, the target. Looking for Hoffman. Griffiths. Got himself in the way. Now a chance for the Mariners to break with numbers. Hutchinson. Podliak. Eventually closed off Tommy Podliak. Hoffman. And Griffiths. Again, the flag is up. Well, he'd run the wrong way anyway, so the ball was going to go out. The last one was wrong, and that one's wrong. He's onside. Not a good call. Strong header from Kwasnik. Jade so North has a look at the ground with that uh, clearance miscued. We see Hutchinson. And he's intercepted by Noel Spencer. He goes down a channel. It's a big ask of Holland. And Vukovic puts that one into the second tier of the grandstand to end the first half here at the Blue Tongue Stadium. It's been an absorbing first half of football. James Holland opening the scoring for the visitors, but Adam Kwasnick good enough to reply for the home team, the Central Coast Mariners. The F3 derby living up to billing at halftime. It's the Mariners 1, the Jets 1. Still a job to do for the Mariners at home here at the Blue Tongue against their arch rivals, the Newcastle Jets. They were, though, good enough to come from behind against the Newcastle team who are looking for a win to guarantee their place in the finals series.
It was an entertaining first half of football. These are the stats that count 57% possession to the visiting team, but it was the Central Coast who had more time in the opposition half. Three corners for the Jets, six offsides in the game, 15 fouls. And so far, no need for Matthew Breeze to reach into his top pocket for a yellow card. Well, plenty of highlights, and we begin the wrap. The first goal of the game scored by the Mariners junior, James Holland, six minutes gone. What a piece of work from James Holland on the halfway line there. Beautiful piece of skill. Ends up going out to Denny. Paul O'Grady won't be happy with his effort. He goes past him after that misjudgment. Look at his skill, though. Over there. Releases the put so he finds Denny. The ball comes into the box. As I said, misjudgment from Paul O'Grady. James Holland takes full advantage gets a lucky bounce and he just gets a toe to it throws it past the hapless Vukovic no fault on the goalkeeper at all it wasn't a great start with Central Coast conceding 10 goals in their last two home games here against Sydney and Melbourne the signs weren't good early on well the one that got away James Holland set the Jets on their way for defending a feature again a feature just a couple of minutes later as the Jets fans were celebrating they almost got Number two, Andrew Clark, just ordinary a, back pass. Just a lazy pass. Joel Griffiths won't be happy that he didn't get his 11th of the season. Already got 10, he goes past. I think he can take just a little extra touch there and stroke it home with the left foot. The chance went begging. Here's the goal, the equalising goal. They responded very quickly. Adam Kwasnick cutting in from the left. Poor effort from Deputzo. But still had a lot to do, Adam Kwasnick. He built that into the back of the net. Kovic really no chance. Skips inside here. Elridge gets a touch. To put so that's just on the edge of your box. You can't defend like that. But it was a beautiful finish from Adam Kwasnick. Yes, Adam to put so won't be uh, too keen to see that replay. But that's a tidy finish from Kwasnick. Making the most of his chance. Back in the starting 11. At that stage, the Mariners all square. And the goals. Looked as though they would come thick and fast. Mark, Rod, Mark Bridge, I should say, with a shot 13 minutes gone. Well, we're surprised really the score was at one all after the half an hour. Mark, Mark Bridge in a similar position to James Holland when he scored. But this time Vukovic comes out to smother the danger. Good first touch from Mark Bridge. He tries to slide that one in between the keeper and the near post. Vukovic does well. And you'd have to say... He's made three first-class saves, Danny Vukovic. At the other end, Andrew Clark still looking for his first goal after 52 games in the Hyundai A-League. And this is why. It's, it's, it's a defender's shot. He, re he actually could have gone on with that. Beautiful little pass from Tommy Conley. Good forward run. Nice play from Petrovsky. Look, he can take another touch there. Johnny Aloisi coming in. He's furious. The one player who has been scoring recently is Mile Jedinak. Ball, what a ball that was from Jednak, who started the move. Ball out, comes back to him. It's a mistake from Noel Spencer. And it was a similar sort of strike to Kwasnick's. But luckily for Newcastle, this one goes about a metre. The right-hand side of that post. Here's the mistake from Spencer. Instant shot. He has to take it quick. Look at Kovic. He was absolutely filthy with his defence. Well, speaking of goalkeepers, Danny Vukovic hasn't he stood tall? Crucial save again. 27 minutes gone. His former Parramatta Power teammate Matt Thompson thought he had a goal. What about that pass from Joel Griffiths to Mark Bridge? Left Andrew Clark stranded. Mark Bridge really didn't take it confidently, but that is a great save. It's one of the saves of the season for me. It's low, right. It's going in the bottom corner. Gets low. Gets a strong hand down to it. Beautiful save from Vukovic. And this just a minute later from the Jets. He's unlucky, Joel Griffiths. He's just trying to guide that in to the far corner. He knows how close it was. Vukovic filthy with his defenders. The problems are still there for the Central Coast. There was plenty of yellow shirts there. But Griffiths still managed to get a, what was a difficult header. He was actually leaning back on an angle when he got that. What about this for hesitation in the defence? Both defences have been guilty of falling asleep at times. This time, Petrovsky's the one who gets in behind as Durante hesitates. He just scoops this one over Kovic, who'd come off his line. Aloisi nearly got onto it. But Newcastle escaped. Well, two goals in the first half. There could easily have been half a dozen. These are the attack stats. 12 shots from the Jets, 8 from the Mariners, but the Mariners had 18 balls into the box compared to just 12 for Newcastle. Newcastle again 
in front on the shots on target. The Mariners with four shots to two. Welcome back to the Blue Tongue Stadium. Well, two players with a point to prove did just that. From then on, it was a tale of missed opportunities in the F3 derby. Watching Socceroos coach Tim Verbeek would have been impressed with the courage and determination on show as he plans to head to the World Cup campaign, which will no doubt feature the biggest World Cup hero of them all, John Aloisi. Well, one player hoping to be involved in that campaign is the injured Mariners defender, Dean Heffernan. He's talking with Mel McLaughlin. for you but the rehab's not going too bad yeah everything's going well it's been three weeks and you know every day it gets better so you know it's a good sign for things to come obviously a missed opportunity to play for the Socceroos at the moment but uh, a big rap from Pimba back when he announced the squad talking about you singling you out um, yeah it's, you know it was great to hear and you know hopefully he doesn't forget about me and as soon as I get the rehab going and get on the bench for the grand final we'll be right and what about on the field at the moment? Pressure on both sides for different reasons. It's pretty tense out there. Yeah, it is. And, um, you know, it's a lot to play for tonight and just especially for us to get that top spot. So, yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Dean. Dean Heffernan might be playing again this season, but I doubt he'll be back for the start of next season. And in the meantime, he'll be hoping to grab a Socceroos cap or two during that World Cup campaign, which, of course, kicks off next month in Melbourne. But for now, it's all about the Hyundai A-League action. What a game we've had here. What a second half we've got to look forward to. As the Mariners get the ball rolling, one apiece at the moment. A draw won't be a bad result for either team. We shouldn't forget that. But wouldn't the Jets love to settle their nerves and get all three points? against their arch Well, they would, but like you said, a draw's not a bad result for both teams. It keeps it... Well, it's not a bad result for the neutrals either because what possibly keeps it alive. Of course, Adelaide is still in there as well. They're playing in Perth uh, tomorrow. What about what about the blockbuster, though, tomorrow night? at Suncorp Stadium, Queensland against Sydney. That is going to be something. If it's anything like this game, it will be a real good one. It's this... And if Melbourne is still alive, of course, what about the prospects of a Sydney v Melbourne match next Sunday? That is tomorrow week, of course, at the football stadium. The SFS in Sydney. Maybe we can see a bumper crowd for a change at the SFS. Well, haven't the crowds been good over the last few weeks? Supporters uh, voting with their feet, really, about football during the festive season. Oh, it's been fantastic. This is the third great crowd in a row we've seen here in Gosford. And the great thing is, Mike, is that a lot of the times the home team has lost in front of these great crowds, but they keep coming back. And certainly at this ground, they've had their fair share of pain in the last two home matches. Great entertainment. 5-2 against Melbourne wasn't a great performance, although they had their chances in that game as well. But what a game that Sydney, Sydney game was here. Joel Griffiths. In on goal, John Griffiths forces the save, can't get it past Vukovic. Not many can at the moment. Oh, that's his favourite place, inside right channel. He hit it too straight, hit it too well in a lot of respects. Was it a nice height for Vukovic? Ten goals this season makes Joel Griffiths the league's top goal scorer. One more and he would equal the all-time record set by Danny Alsop last season. Bridge. Nice technique. I'm sure Joel Griffiths will be partly relieved that he's not the player who scored the goal for Newcastle League tonight. He scored around half of his team's goals. Here he is trying to get in behind and does so and wins the corner. Well, he's done well. Great turn of pace as well from Joel Griffiths. He did throw the gauntlet down to the rest of his team during the week in the local media. How about someone else chips in with a goal or two? Well, he's got one from James Holland. Nothing wrong with that. I don't, don't mind that. A player that's showing that he's a leader, not having a go at his plays, he's just saying, come on, be fair, he has been the standout in the Hyundai A-League this season, Joel Griffiths. Fourth corner of the game for Newcastle, driven in by Holland, Vukovic is in superlative touch at the moment. Quick release as well as a good one, Yedinak, plays in Alawisi, or tries to. Uh, well read by Matt Thompson. The 
we talk about a draw being a decent result for both teams. No sign at all, though, at this stage that these teams are happy to settle for a draw. Which is great news, of course, for the fans. A nudge there from Durante. On Ella Wissing. That's ruled a foul. A strong challenge. Is that a shoulder charge? Be fair. We've let that one go. Some anxious moments here for Newcastle now. Because of that decision by Matthew Breeze, who now steps out the distance. He'll get that wall back another metre or two. And more problems for Adam Cosley with that bloody nose. An opportune time for him to get some more treatment. Set up for Yedinak. I'll tell you what, Adam Kosnick keeps going on like this. He's going to need a transfusion by the end of the match. There's <laughs> Milo Yedinak again slicing his shot. Yeah, not a good strike. Just, just tried to hit it too hard. His head come flying up. Anxious to see where the ball was headed. Keep your head down when you're going for power like that from a free kick. A new shirt for Adam Kostick. I think that's his, all that blood. Might have been his third one. I'm not sure if they have any more in reserve. I think that is his third one. Wow, from Holland. Spencer. Joel Griffiths cuts inside. Brave tackle. Crucial tackle from Yedinak. Now with Pondelyak. Stretching his legs, Tommy Ponlia gets away from the puts out. Second man in was Elwich, he did just enough. End to end in the second half already. He just had the legs there, Tommy Ponlia. They pretty much stayed the same both sides. Both coaches reasonably happy with what they saw in the first half. I'm sure they had had a bit of a go. Gary Van Eegman and Laurie McKinna at their defences. Times very, very disorganised. When you look at the head-to-head -head between these two teams, they are traditionally very, very hard to separate. No doubt the victory will be hoping the Mariners can separate themselves from the Jets. Indeed, uh, Kevin Musket's been on the blower to John Aloisi today, so come on, do us a favour. Get us a result. Great ball there from Durante. Griffiths. Joel Griffiths doesn't miss from there. The Jets in front again. Well, it's awful defending again. Completely caught square from a long ball. Is that the most important goal of his season, Joel Griffiths? Well, he equals the record. They just caught, caught the ball watching Paul O'Grady. He gets in between Alex Wilkinson, who tries to get back, but caught too square, too far apart, possibly the two centre halves. There's the ball, floats over O'Grady. Great finish from Joel Griffiths. Good touch, takes it around Vukovic. That's the touch that matters and just slides at home. Thank you very much, 11th of the season. And that's enough to equal the all-time record. Joel Griffiths has done it again. And the Mariners have to come from behind again. But don't bet against it. Well, look, I'd have to say that Paul O'Grady would be happy with his contribution in both goals. That time just completely got caught ball watching. It's just a long ball. Well, Griffiths found himself completely unmarked and in behind. Alex Wilkinson maybe a little bit too far away from O'Grady as well. Well, there's absolutely no way Pim Verbeek can leave John Griffiths out of his side. In it comes from that far side, Kwasnick. Deep cross. Difficult chance for John Hutchinson. And Ernie Merrick's head has just dropped again in Melbourne. <laughs> but don't worry, Ernie. A win here for the Jets, and it's all over for the champions. But it could change. You wouldn't like to put your house on there be no more goals than this one. John Hutchinson's a player capable of getting one. Again, 
just four games ago. They were the best defensive unit in the country, Central Coast. Did Alex Tobin go on a holiday? Is that the reason? <laughs> the all-time great Socceroos defender, of course, on the coaching staff of the Mariners. Well, we'll have to blame him then. <laughs> we got Tony Vidmo on the bench. He's warming up at the moment. Vidmo back from suspension. Has been an amazing turnaround, hasn't it? The stingiest defence turning into the leakiest defence in a matter of weeks. What has gone wrong? North. Thompson. All the noise now coming from those travelling Jets supporters. Why they enjoy the train trip home. They take all three points for the final series to look forward to. Elrich bends it, but not enough. Well, he doesn't need to there. Jets fans, buoyant at the moment. Terry Gelrich got a lot of pace, and I've said this time and time and again about him, and I think he has improved as the season's gone on, but he squared up there to Alvin Checkley. Why he didn't take him on, I'll never know. He tries to bend it around him. Just doesn't use his attributes enough for me. Here's Hutchinson. One against two. Checkley. Hutchinson. Maybe Checkley will push forward a bit more often now. Tomorrow is to hunt down this lead of the Newcastle Jets. Plenty of time for them to do that. 35 minutes remaining. In front of another fantastic crowd. In fact, it's a record crowd once again. Here in Gosford, 19,238, about 600 better than the old record. This was set on New Year's Eve against the Melbourne Victory. In fact, that's the third game in a row where the Mariners have broken their old record Fantastic. of attendances. Fantastic to see. Now all they want to see is their team win. <laughs> We're down here. We've lost the other two games, but as I said in Melbourne last night, with 20, over 25,000 turning up to see Melbourne move, had in different form, particularly at the Telstra, Telstra Dome. Well, bloody awful form of Tom, to be honest. But they turned up, and that's what supporting's all about. Well, the, it's 25 the in Melbourne last night, and almost 20 here tonight. We're talking 30 in Brisbane tomorrow. And depending on what happens in Perth, we're going to have a record round of attendances. The, uh, the under A League, it just keeps getting bigger and better. Well, Perth have got the lowest average in the under A League by quite a way, so. Message out to all the people there in Perth. Go and support the team tomorrow. Credit to those fans as well. Laurie, Gaunt, Laurie McKinna has thrown down the gauntlet on more than one occasion to the Newcastle fans. So, this is going to be a proper derby. We need the visiting fans to turn up. It's Hoffman. Well, he's chasing the win, Laurie McKinna. They're going to make a change. A striker for a defender, we believe. Matt Simon on for Paul O'Grady. Wilkinson harassed by Joel Griffiths, given no respite at all. Oh, and again, just giving some last-minute advice to his impact player, Matt Simon, who does, as we say, have an impact, but what's missing is a goal. What a time for him to break his drought. 19 games, no goals. It's Taylor made for the fairy tale. He scored for the Ollie Roos against the Socceroos at the start of the week. That will do his confidence some good. What he needs to do most of all is score for his club side. In a game which counts for so much. Pondelier goes deep. Just a bit too much on it for Ella Wissing. Checkerly whips in across to that back post. It's clear the head though of Petrovsky. Wilkinson back to his keeper. Paul O'Grady not yet aware that his time is almost up. Ball, but it's a second chance. And now that change will be made 
An adventurous change by Laurie McKenna. Early mark for Paulo Grady. That's not the happiest of nights for him. Disappointed with himself, I'm sure. It's certainly an adventurous move, isn't it? That's three up front. Well, maybe Yedinak going into the centre of defence. Maybe 4-3-3. Three, three, three. Hutchinson. He's chancing his arm as well in another way, Laurie McKinnon. He has both Sash Petrovsky and John Hutchinson sitting on potential two-match bans. We had hoped to uh, take both of those players off the middle stages of this second half if the game worked out that way. It hasn't worked out that way, of course. Here's Joel Griffiths, the goal scorer, in space. Hooks it over his head. Chance here for Hoffman to break his drought. Oh, he's got to take it first time. Didn't have time for a touch. Great work from Joel Griffiths. Really, Hoffman should have done better. Three at the back. So we check with Clark and Wilkinson there now. Get the next sitting in front of that back three. Give a bit of cover, but the other night he's not playing as a centre half. Boston. Look at the Simon off the head of Durante. Heads down a little bit, Central Coast. We need to get him back up. Only one way and back in. There's a wonderful cross field ball. Checkley got sucked in. Joel Grimmis picks out Hoffman. He's got to take that first time. Might be a little bit difficult. He did not have time for a touch. Uh, Joel Griffiths back to help out in defence, but he has conceded the free kick. That's a striker's tackle. We talk about a defender's shot, but well, that's a striker's tackle. <laughs> I'll tell you what, what about his work rate, though? He's a coach's dream. Well, he can be a coach's nightmare at times, but his willingness to work, get back, he doesn't commit the foul. Luckily for him, it's further out than where it typically ended up falling. And a coach's nightmare sometimes with his temper and ability to, drop, to get a red card and everything else. He's a coach's dream. Podoliak. Is it short? This time gets it back from Petrovsky. Now Kwasnik. There's six in the middle for the central coach. Bosnick takes on Thompson, gets it all wrong, horribly wrong. There's absolutely no need for the central coach to panic at this point. Plenty of time left on the clock. That just shows you scoring is a confidence thing, but so is defending. They just look so nervous. Newcastle come forward. Checkerly. Oh, Hutchinson. Trotsky cuts inside. Can't oh, find a way past Elwich though. Oh. Yes, if this stays as it is, depending on tomorrow's outcome, we'll be going to the final round of the season with four teams tied up on 31 points. Elwich, fair challenge on Hutchinson is the ruling of Matthew Breeds. Now Bridge. Getting stretched Central Coast. He said it just before. You need to panic at this stage. It's 2 1 off. He's trying to do a little bit too much. 
cool hits, just keep the ball. There's still a lot of football to be played in this game. Don't doubt that. Clear foul there from James Holland. Vukovic launches it long, looking for Petrovsky to get some sort of contact. In fact, they came off a Newcastle player. Clark. Newcastle at the moment backing off, which is always a dangerous policy. Again, Kozak's crossing is well, he's not, poor. He's not getting it out of his feet enough. He's getting too close in there, giving himself no chance to get his foot around it. He's got to give himself a bit more room, push the ball, make half a metre, and then cross it. Well, Laurie McKenna may in fact have seen enough from Adam Kozak. He struggled with that bloody nose. And that is, in fact, the end of the section for Adam Kozak. Andre Gumprecht, maybe the most popular player here on the Central Coast with a big, big 25 minutes in front of him. Can he turn the tide? Andre Gilprecht. The goal scorer makes late. A great equaliser. And listen to the roar for Andre Gilprecht. He's gone straight out into the right-hand side where Kosnick was operating. He's not a wide player, naturally, Andre Gilprecht. But the only... Call him an actual wide player was Kosnick, who can play that role. Well, he's done his job, Kosnick. He scored a goal. That counts for a fair bit. Fresh legs for Andre Gumprecht. So two changes and a change in formation. Laurie McKinna, who looks to end this worrying sequence of form at home. Yedinak's done well, and he's taken out by Noel Spencer. And the first ticket to the former Mariners player, who has no complaints. A very easy decision. Broke the momentum as well, Yedinak was away. Czechely, dangerous ball from Czechely. Great fist out from Ante Kovic and some pretty heavy traffic as well. Gilprecht's first contribution is to size down Mark Bridge. Durante behind play just feeling the effects. Kovic took everything out then. Ball, players, anything in his way. That's what you have to do. He knows that Pim Verbeek is watching Ante Kovic. At the moment, according to some, in pole position. That soccer is squad. Hutchinson. decision for Matthew Breeze. They're inviting danger here in Newcastle. Sitting too deep. They're to getting deep and deeper look the inside their own penalty box. Got Brent. Bridge gets his body in front. It's a helping hand from Thompson, but Matt Thompson, or Matt Simon I should say, across to make life difficult, as he always does. Well, if Gary Van Egmond wanted a player who could come on and set the tempo, he's got the perfect solution. Stewie Musharlik looks as though he's ready to contribute now. Not 100% fit, but good enough for 20 or 30 minutes, according to his coach. He may help stem this tide. 
because at the moment Newcastle are right back inside their own penalty area defending very very deep Bill Prex cross chance here what a save from Kovic superb stop from the keeper and a relieving free kick for Newcastle John Aloisi thought that was in what about that for a save Great ball from Gumprek to just gets a touch off Newcastle defender's head. I talked about one of the saves of the season from Vukovic in the first half. This is one from Kovic. Going the other way, gets a hand up. That is a world-class save. Well, haven't both goalkeepers distinguished themselves tonight? Danny Vukovic in the first half and Ante Kovic, a blinding save. Keep his team in the lead. The rest for Noel Spencer. And on comes Streamy Charlotte. With the plan to settle things down, I'm sure. Just get a bit more shape back in this Newcastle side. And it's not sitting too deep. And often do we see the team takes the lead. Checkle has left it. And Hoffman and Bukovic collide heavily. And taking some time to get back to his feet. He felt that one. Jason Hoffman. Well, Czechley hesitated, allowed the ball to bounce. Hoffman goes in bravely. Vukovic asking no questions. And that's just a, well, it's a collision. It's... He'll just be winded, Jason Hoffman. Yep, I think he's got a knee. Right in the guts. And that does take the wind out of you. 20 minutes remaining here in Gosford. The Jets in front against the Mariners. Did Johnny Aloisi, he thought he'd scored, didn't he? He probably would have scored against most goalkeepers, but Kovic has been in great form. That was a great save. Thompson. Well, John Aloisi had his tail up after that near miss. And he's been nudged off the ball behind play, Aloisi, by Joel Griffiths. Temperatures rising again. It's creeping up a little bit. It's a key stretch of the game here. Big players have to come up with the big plays now. Podlyak whips it in, looking for Simon. The Jets manned up well. Holland looking for the switch of play, a slip from Clark. Here's Yedinak. Hoffman. You can feel the tension, can't you? Around the ground. Newcastle 2-1. Now under 20 minutes to go. Laurie McKenna thinking, what, what can he do? Think he's got any nails left? Not many. After the last three home games. Started off on the, the other hand, I'd say. Well, Gary Van Egmont, there will be no way counting his chickens just yet no <laughs> no way at all not in this league you get us the away team leading to put so north immediately put under pressure rich Fourth most touch from Mark Bridge. He's played his team into trouble. Here's Hutchinson. Has options. One of them is to go for goal. Has taken a deflection. Kovic got lucky. Yeah, he's already down. Took a deflection. Luckily for him, it's come straight at him. Hutchinson unopposed. Takes a shot. Takes a chance. Comes off Jade North. Oh, Griffiths pirouettes away from one. 
almost gets the ball at the second attempt. But he does make life so difficult for defenders, Joel Griffiths. I was about to say, you can't take a breather back there with him. He's just always there. Well, he doesn't wear the armband for Newcastle, but doesn't he lead by example? <laughs> Gary Van Egmond will be hoping, I'm sure, at this stage of the game, is that his team just keeps some sort of possession. They're turning it over cheaply, Newcastle. The Mariners with all the ball. James, drop! James! You can hear him telling James Holland to just drop deeper now. We need to fill up that midfield, Newcastle. Yeah, that's it. It's just a little bit too open in the midfield. James Holland playing in behind Griffiths. He just wants him to drop back up out the midfielders. Well, speaking of room, look at that for Yedinak. Chance here. Petrovsky. And Kovic got across in time. Hasn't been his night, such Petrovsky. No, not a good touch. You have to take this quick. Yednak finds him well in that right side channel. First touch let him down. Straight up the other end, Joel Griffiths with the sort of odds he likes, one against two. And the one wins out. He's off to a Vispa Fukuoka to keep fit during the off-season, Joel Griffiths. Well, the season he's had, of course, we're in danger of losing it. I think that's part of the strategy for Newcastle. Keep him happy so that he hangs around. Here's Elrich. Let's hope so. Back heel from Griffiths. And then Charlotte. The Putso gets the better of Matt Simon. The Putso! And Matt Simon did his job in the end. Corner for Newcastle. A chance to take a breather. They could work for Matt Simon. He's come all the way back. Followed the job right to its end. Does give Newcastle a corner. Oh, a corner over there for James Holland where the Newcastle fans are. Now it's stopped. Jumping and singing and clapping. Since Joel Griffiths his side ahead. Holland's corner. Joel Griffiths, free header. Golden opportunity to ice the cake for the Jets' top goal scorer. ball comes in he finds himself free just stands really doesn't make a run no be disappointed with that look there's no one on the back post a let off for the Mariners and they make something of it here's Gumprecht now Podoliak Petrovsky the receiving end of a Matt Thompson challenge another set piece situation for the Jets to deal with. Hutchinson. Simon throws himself at the ball. Covers with a punch. As far as Gumprecht. Lorenzo well, Covers is a big strong man and he is uh, backing himself getting off his line and some pretty heavy traffic well he's coming body contact in there well he's coming off his line because he knows the threat particularly of Aloisi in the air doesn't want to give him any chance Petrovsky snapshot Kovic at full stretch reels it in but didn't have enough pace on it to beat Kovic it's just a snapshot little ball in there for Aloisi turns takes it quick couldn't get the power needed Charlotte. Bridge again. Bridge doesn't keep possession and now it's Alois. He looked to be a handball and that's the way the assistant has seen it as well. He's caught out by the bounce there, John Alois. Well spotted on that far side by Gavin Martin. So sure if it was for a handball or was it offside he gave it for anyway important thing I guess for Newcastle is they have the ball time ticking away for the Central Coast it was off, man. Off a 
ahead of Checkley. Ten minutes for Gary Van Egmont will seem like a lifetime. Griffiths. Well, McKinnon must be thinking, what does he have to do? What can he say? Any directions he can give? Just over ten minutes remaining to save this game now. Well, I've got the wobbles, the Mariners. Five points from 18, no doubt about that. Not the sort of form you want to take into the final series. They're still alive in this game. Let's not forget that. Yeah, but if it stays away, it becomes five from 21. And you can see him thinking, put his fingers in his mouth again. I mean, look, the great thing for them, the positive thing for them, is that they are in the four. They will be in the four. But they really are in the driving seat. We said a point wouldn't be a bad result for either team. Mariners are still very much in the contest for a draw. Petrovsky. That's a wrong option. Sasha Petrovsky trying with his left foot from all of 30 metres. Holland. And Thompson. Ejects weathered that storm. Good ball in behind. Griffiths reels it in. He's too quick for Clark. Cuts inside, Joel Griffiths. Tries to work the space for the shot. That's good defending this time from the Central Coast. Now Mark Bridge from a standing start. Quickly play it off Hoffman. Oh, they look so nervous when they're defending, don't they? The coast. Get in that. Aloisi. Skips away from Deputzo. Room now for Gumprex. Gumprex ball inside. And it just wouldn't fall for Sash Petrovsky. That's been the story of his game. Well, it's not that it wouldn't fall. It was a poor touch. It's not a great ball. It really went behind everyone, but it did make its way to Petrovsky at the back post. There's the ball gets in behind everyone else. But Petrovsky just missed it off camera there, but it was a poor touch. A good touch there would have set himself up for a great chance for a striker goal. Hoffman. Well, they got for Newcastle and you'd feel they've killed it off. Still 10 minutes left though. Late flag against Hoffman. Tim score anyway. 10 minutes left. I wonder if he's thinking that that missed opportunity, that golden opportunity. Come back to hold it. Jason Hoffman hasn't scored in the Hyundai A League. And certainly hope it doesn't. There's 10 minutes left in this game, and it's 10 minutes left if it stays like this. At Melbourne's on Adelaide season. There's a win here for Newcastle will effectively rule them out. The four will be done and dusted, just not the order. We've uh, tended to forget about Adelaide United and all the excitement of Melbourne Victory's renaissance. The Puzzo. Now Thompson. Lots of room in front of him for a moment, but Simon again providing the cover. Thompson to the byline. Here's Hoffman. Hooks it back in. Missed by Yedinak. And Simon puts that one into the stands. Oh, it just looks nervous, doesn't it? <laughs> Paul goes down into that final third. A convincing header from Yedinak. Simon scrambling it away. I just feel since Joel Griffiths scored very early in the second half, it's just been a... It's like panic from the Central Coast. They had plenty of time to go about calmly and build something, but it's all been rushed. Even when you look at a couple of the missed opportunities, it's like... Rush touches, particularly from Petrovsky just moments ago. Here's Aloisi. Clipped. Well, Hoffman. Now Chickley. Clearance from Tarek Elrich. That's what we call an answer. 
played much more like an orthodox right back tonight, hasn't he? Oh, which hesitation there from Newcastle. Appeals for handball, mostly from the fans, the Mariners fans. Pondeliak, Gumprecht. Gumprecht goes for goal. And Kovic lets it go past the goal. Again, I think it's, it's not a great option from Andrew Gumprecht. That sort of position, it really has been a take something really special to beat Kovic, particularly in the form Kovic is in at the moment. Head numbers. I think the best chance, well, the best chance they've created in the second half was Aloisi's header, of course. And that was once when they did get the ball wide. It was Gumprecht the substitute. And a good cross in. So, very nearly a goal. And a lot of from Vukovic. Work for the Mariners last week. Simon. Also work for the Mariners in Perth last week, Route 1 football. Hutchinson swings it in. Matt Thompson shepherding the ball back to his goalkeeper. Clark. Mariners have it back through Pondelyak. Early ball in. It's a difficult ball. The strikers to deal with from there. Wilkinson. Back to Vukovic again. Vukovic has been a spectator for quite a long period in the second half. Early ball. Attacked by... Durante in from Gumprecht. That will be a corner for the Central Coast. Their first corner of the game with five minutes remaining. Hutchinson to swing it away from Kovic. Try and find a player in a yellow shirt. One of them is Yedinak. Griffiths at the top of his head. Crucial touch. Checkerly. Time and space here for Clark. Bucharlik slow to get across. Simon's header again appeals for handball. Hasn't been cleared properly. Then the Jets get another corner. I should say the Mariners get another corner. Two in a row. They're asking some questions now, the Central Coast. But have they got the answers? Not so far. Hutchinson, Hoffman, crucial header from the substitute, big header, Checkerly, Hutchinson again, they're queuing up in the middle, Gilbrick makes the run, gets to the byline, and it's crossed the line, a goal kick, and that's a big, big relief for Newcastle, a chance to Gary Van Egmont to make another change. Gilprecht not happy with himself. It looks as though Stephen Labert will come on for the final few minutes with the idea to steady that defence. James Holland, the player to make way, the goal scorer. Well, we talked about a test of character for James Holland going into this match. I think he's passed it with flying colours. Certainly has. Took his goal very well. Good performance, more defensively in the second half. It was excellent in the first half. Well, have a look at that. It looks as though Stephen Labert is going to play as a striker in the final few minutes. Will he be a handful? There we go. Good practice. Chance here for Pondelyak. Had to snatch at the shot. No, he was stretching for it. Still should have done better. Should hit the target. Make, make the keeper make a save. He's in a great position. Well found by Petrovsky. Just helps this one on. He's on the edge of the six-yard box. Just keep it low. That's a great chance at this stage of the game. Gets 
the uh, goal kick all wrong. That's about the only thing he's got wrong this tonight. Kovic. Yeah. Hutchinson. Now we'll find a way through. Hello, we'll see. That's a right foot shot from a player who scores was never there so him. many goals with his left foot. And that's right. Thompson. We're told there'll be an extra three minutes to the end of this game. In the final minute of regulation time. It's been a hard day at the office for the Jets' defence, but they've uh, held on in the second half. And CJ North, the skipper, reminding his teammates of just how important this result will be. Laban. Simon, good use of the body. Brought down, I think it was Thompson. Second man in, free kick taken in a hurry by Gumpret. Hutchinson. Whipped into the near post by Hutchinson. Miscued clearance. It was a very relieved Adam Caputso. We're into stoppages. The most important three minutes of Newcastle season. When you think losing this game, you know, a chance to miss out on the four altogether. They take the three points here, they're equal top. There's an echo on the sideline screaming at his players to just try and hold the ball. Head towards the corner. Hoffman's going to take his advice. Hoffman in the corner, check a leap. Ball heading across the hole of the line, still in play. He gets trying to box in the Mariners, and Stephen Labor has missed on his challenge, and somehow Hutchinson has wriggled free. Yedinak. Gumprecht. Bridge Herring back for Newcastle. No free kick, says Matthew Bridge. Yes, he does eventually. He had a good long look at it. I think he's right. I think it's a foul. The Jets players protest. He took his time to make that decision, Matthew Breeze. He did have a good long look at it, but I thought it, I think he's got it right. Still a long way out. The bridge comes back here. It's a clear foul. Well, bridge feels he got the ball first. Well, he's, he's pushing him from the back as well as he's trying to get his foot around. Vukovic has gone up for the Mariners. The entire Central Coast team now in the attacking half of the field. Poniak over the dead ball. Poniak has wasted the opportunity. Oh dear. That is this time the importance and the position he's in there. That is poor. Well, they've only got seconds to hang on now, Newcastle. What a wasted opportunity. From the set piece. Now, cruel sometimes for fans. Three home games, three record crowds. And three losses. Free kick for Newcastle. Only seconds, surely on the watch of Matthew Breeze. The Newcastle fans ready to celebrate. Laurie McKenna ready to commiserate, perhaps. four has been decided and Newcastle Jets are in the finals for the third season in a row and they've done it the hard way.
with their first ever win at the Blue Tongue Stadium against their arch rivals, the match winner, Joel Griffiths. What a game in the F3 derby, the full-time score, Newcastle Jets 2, Central Coast Mariners 1. These are the goals from a thrilling derby match here in Gosford, the first for the Jets. And it came from James Holland, the former Mariners junior, a mistake at the back by O'Grady, punished by Holland to silence the Boo Boys among the Mariners fans, but it didn't take long for the Central Coast to get back on level terms. A smart finish by Adam Kwasnick. One apiece at half time, but the man who cannot stop scoring, Joel Griffiths, came up with a winner, his 11th of the season, his most important goal of the season, Joel Griffiths, to separate these two teams. The match winner is talking with Mel McLaughlin. <laughs> It's just been suggested upstairs that this could be the most important goal of your career. What do you think? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I think uh, we're eagle first now, surprisingly enough. But, you know, that was a tough game. They kept on coming at us. And we knew, uh, you know, if we get a, a result, you know, it gives us a chance to make the four. We eliminate Melbourne and Adelaide now, so uh, now we've got Perth at home next week and it, hopefully uh, it should be a good one. And, of course, for you, as mentioned, another goal. And you equal Danny Allsop's record. Yep. Uh, yeah, I only found out that uh, when I was reading the magazine uh, today, but, uh, you know, it's been a good year. Hopefully I've got another one to break it and, uh, yeah, get my uh, bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of positives. You guys are on a roll. Confident you can take that. You're equal top now. Yeah, that's just that just shows how weird this league is. You know, anyone can win now. I think uh, we can sit back and watch the Sydney-Brisbane uh, Sydney -Brisbane game and, uh, you know, put our feet up and hopefully uh, they can give us a draw. All right. Thanks a lot, Joel. Alex, disappointing. You had plenty of shots, especially in the second half. Yeah, I mean, uh, we probably dominated most of the second half, but just let him get back in the game with that goal. And, you know, it's very disappointing to uh, go down in front of such a big crowd. But, you know, we've got one game uh, left next week. And, you know, hopefully uh, Sydney and Queensland can get a draw and then we can still uh, have a good shot at uh, winning it. The Mariners, stumbled, the Mariners have stumbled a lot recently the last few weeks. Are you, are you getting worried? No, I don't think so. I mean, uh, there's still plenty of positives to come out of that. We probably could have got, you know, three or four goals in that second half, but um, on another day, you know, they might have gone in. But, you know, that's football. All right, thanks, Alex. Thank you. Well, what a huge result this is for the Newcastle Jets, and that's why they're up to second place, would you believe it, on the competition table. Equal goal difference, equal points with the Central Coast Mariners. Queensland Raw and Sydney FC will make up the top four. The season is over for the defending champions, Melbourne Victory and Adelaide United. And the top four cannot be overtaken with one round remaining, but the minor premiership still up for grabs. It's a big prize as well with the AFC Champions League at stake. What a massive game again at Suncorp Stadium tomorrow. The Raw hosting Sydney FC. Our coverage from 6.30pm Eastern on Fox Sports 2. We complete the round from the West. Perth Glory hoping to avoid the wooden spoon against Adelaide United. Effectively a dead rubber now, but plenty of pride to play for for both teams. The coverage from 9pm Eastern on Fox Sports 2. Well, what an F3 derby we've had here tonight. The Jets getting home, the Jets in the four. The Mariners still with plenty to play for, though. From me, Mike Hoffel, Robbie Slater, and the team, it's the bye for now. almost certainly kept his team's top two chances alive. Everyone wants a piece of the Jets these days, who've hit form at the right time of the year. Although Joel Griffiths has been the name on most people's lips, Ante Kovic continues to ride his own wave of success. Last night was a good game for me, I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy with it, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm more happy that we got the three points. Points, he assured, with a high pressure save. Superb stop from the keeper. One-handed parry drawing calls of best save ever from some teammates and given the crucial nature of the match, it may not be far wrong in terms of Newcastle's season. That is a world-class save. 
in the whole scheme of things, it was a, it was a pretty damn good save, so I was, I was pretty chuffed about it. While sewing up a finals berth, Newcastle has a genuine chance of finishing in the top two. Eight Newcastle players join the Socceroos camp late tomorrow in Sydney before the home clash against the glory. The only downside from last night's win, the FFA are investigating an alleged coin throwing incident towards Mariners player John Hutchinson, which may involve Jets fans. 50 cent piece, you pocket that. That's stupid. It doesn't get much tighter at the top in the A-League with four sides locked on top spot with only goal difference separating them with a round remaining. The amazing situation comes after Sydney and Queensland played out a scoreless draw in Brisbane while there were five goals as Perth beat Adelaide. Jamie Harnwell's goal early in the second half ensured the home side some glory with a 3-2 win. But the eagerly anticipated match between Sydney FC and the Queensland Raw was an anti-climax, finishing goalless. It did push them both to 31 points, however, along with the Central Coast and Newcastle, as all four jostle for positions ahead of the semi-finals. Eight Newcastle Jets joined the 27-man Socceroos squad today in Sydney for the second of their selection camps, but Joel Griffiths would rather concentrate on his coming club match. Pleased to be in the mix for Australian selection, it's grabbing a top two spot with Newcastle, which is his main focus for now. You don't have to spend much time at training to realise these Jets are flying high. <laughs> They have every reason to be confident, given back-to-back -back wins have secured a finals berth. One more and a top two finish is a genuine possibility. Come Friday, um, everyone will, there'll, be no, there'll be no laughing and uh, we'll, we'll have a job to do and we've got a game plan to do. Before that is a Socceroos camp in Sydney, but the league's leading scorer isn't getting carried away with that. A knock to his knee will limit his input in any case, mindful of staying right for Friday night. I spoke to the physio and I spoke to Pim and he said just come down. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, persist in uh, training. A goal away from the league's scoring record you'd think Griffiths doesn't need to further impress. However, several teammates are also vying for selection. Former Socceroo Jade North is among a Jets defensive line which has the inside running with Socceroos coach Pim Verbeek for the team that plays Qatar next month. It likes the Dutch system like we play and we play out from the back and keep the ball and you know we're the best passing team in the league you know and he can see that and I've heard reports that he really likes the way we play. Meanwhile the FFA are reviewing vision and security reports in relation to a coin throwing incident from the weekend's game which may involve Jets fans.